Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we look into your word tonight, Lord, we pray that hearts are transformed, that you, you have the power to change people's minds, change people's hearts. You have the power to change people's destinies and what they think. Lord, I pray tonight that as we, as we really delve into this, this passage, Lord, that people fall in love with who you are and that people recognize that that love is meant to be shared, that there is a world that needs it. And we pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So this year, uh, my New Year's resolution was a bit different to normal. I said, this is the year I'm going to act like an adult, that I'm going to start doing adult things. Uh, the first, like, as I go through, through life, I've noticed that adults seem to clean and cook and mow the lawn and then pretty much nothing else. That's, that's their life. Um, and every time I, I do a new task, I have to learn how to use a new tool. And I'm so bad at it. Like, every single time, it's like a puzzle to me. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's like I'm making it up as I go. And so I brought in this drill tonight because I want to tell you about the time I first used a drill. So I was at work, and these, these guys I work with, they're, they're born with a drill in their right hand. Right? They know what they're doing. They, um, they're kings of the drill life. And so I was watching them, and they make it look so easy. They, they turn on their drill, and the screw goes straight into the box, and that's it. And so I thought, you know what, this is my time to shine. I'm going I'm to pick up my drill, and I'm going I'm to take on the drill life. And so I pick it up, and I look at it. And the first thing I check is, have I got my battery? Is it on charge? Yep. It's ready to go. And then I check my drill piece, and do I have the right piece? And, and yeah, I do. And so I put my screw in, and then I walk over to this box about this high. And I lean down, and I'm, I'm looking for the spot, the right spot that I want to get. And I line it up perfectly. And I've, I've got the crowd of boys from work around me. All right, this, is, this is a big deal. I've made drilling look like an art form. I am the Leonardo da Vinci of the drill world. And... So I've lined it up right, and this is, it's straight. This, this, this screw's going in straight. There's no chance it's, it's missing. <sighs> then I click it, and I turn it on, and that's all you hear. And nothing seems to happen with the screw. It just keeps turning and turning, but it's not going in. And so I start pushing, and I'm pushing, like, really hard. All right, I'm going red. I'm straining. And for the other guys, it just goes in instantly. And so I'm here and I'm like, I've just got to push through this, this and I'll be right. And after about a minute, the screw finally goes through the box. And so I wipe the sweat off my head, trying to look cool, play it cool. And I look up at the boys and I'm expecting a pat on the back and I'm expecting like a, a welcome ceremony into the drilling world. Um, and that's not what was happening, no. No, they were laughing. <laughs> they thought it was funny. And one of, the, one of the guys I work with, um, he says to me, hey, mate, um, you had the drill in reverse the whole time. <laughs> I had no idea. I, I failed as an adult that time. Um, and look, I'm not yet part of the drill world. But I think there's something important we learn from that. I think we learn the importance of using the things we're given correctly. And so tonight in this passage, Jesus says the same about the gospel. And the gospel is the good news that Jesus came to earth, died, and was resurrected so that he could save us. And he's calling us in this passage to use that correctly. And so tonight I want us to see that God has given everything we need in the gospel, and we're called to give it to everyone that is in need. Jesus has spent the last 20 verses sharing about how we need to share the story of his life. He's telling us to share the story of his life. Last week we looked at the seed and the soil, and that's a parable. And a parable is just a story that gives us some kind of message. Usually it's like spiritual or, or moral. But in verse 21, Jesus starts a new parable. He switches from seeds and soil to lamps and beds. And verse 21, Jesus starts by dropping the mic. He said to them, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? Now Jesus here, you can't disagree with what he's saying. This is just straight truth. He's, he's spitting fire. You can't think differently about this, this verse. No one puts a lamp under the bed. Besides the fact that it's a house fire waiting to happen, like it's actually going to explode if you put a lamp under your bed. It's completely useless. It's like that bloke that put the drill in reverse. <laughs> completely wrecks the point of a drill, and it completely wrecks the point of a lamp. Think of the foolishness of someone that has to hide their lamp. 
The purpose is to provide light at night, and these guys, they're hiding it. It's ridiculous. And I imagine the people standing there at Jesus' time, that this might have been the one time that everyone standing around him agreed with him entirely. They would be standing there, arms folded. You're right, Jesus. You know, there's something wrong with a guy that puts a lamp under his bed. And so where do you put a lamp? Well, Jesus says in the verse, you put it on a stand. You put it on a stand because you want it to light up the whole room. Today, I want you to think of your night lights when you guys were little. And you know, you would plug that little light into the wall and there was enough light from there to scare the monsters away, but not too much that you couldn't sleep. Or maybe you had the hallway light on, you'd have the door open a little bit. That's exactly the purpose of a lamp. And so in those days, they they definitely put their lamps up high so that it would light up the whole room. But this teaching, this is nothing new. Most people knew how to use a lamp. This, Jesus is giving more than adult tips here. If this is just teaching people how to use a lamp, then this verse is a waste of time and we might as well pack up and go home. There is nothing special about knowing how to use a lamp. But what Jesus is actually saying here is something profound. It's, it's amazing. He's challenging the audience to consider how they use what they've been given by God. How people use the message of Jesus. God has given us the greatest gift in his son. Tonight we're going to look at how we shine it brightly in the world. And like a light in a room, you can't hide a light. No, you have to tell everyone. You can't keep the secret of the gospel. And Jesus says this in verses 22 and 23. For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. And whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. The last 20 verses, Jesus has been talking about sharing the good news of his life, and he's not finished yet. Jesus came to reveal the good news, that God has sent his son so that we might be saved. And he's telling his disciples, there's no reason to hide that. No, you're actually told to go and share that. And so, how good is the movie Nemo? Now, I want you to imagine if your friends never shared that movie with you and you never knew how good Nemo was. We always share about good movies. We always want to tell our friends so that they can feel what we felt and know what we know. We want them to experience Nemo. But how much more with the gospel? See, the gospel is more exciting than Nemo. It's more important than Nemo. And we want people to experience Jesus. You'll forget Nemo one day, but you won't forget your Lord. So many of us are willing to share the good news of a father fish who rescued his son. But how many of us are willing to share the glorious news of a saviour who rescued his people? I read a story recently uh, about a crash, a huge accident. It happened about 100 years ago. And it happened at a railway crossing where cars cars would cross over the railway. And during that time, they didn't have boom gates. They didn't have flashing lights. No, someone were actually employed to work day and night to warn cars about oncoming trains. And if you had the night shift, you were given a lamp. And you would walk out with your lamp when the train was coming, and you would wave that lamp in front of the car and let them know that a train was coming. And this accident, this, this accident was brutal. This, this car, five people, mother, father, three kids, driving along, and they didn't stop. They got completely wiped out by the train. The, the car was crippled. Everyone in that car died. There was no chance. And so when an accident like happen, that happens, there's always an investigation. And so they asked the man that was working that night, were you there? And he said, yeah, yeah, I was there. He said, was the train on time? Yeah, the the train was on time like always. Did you wave your lamp? Yeah, of course, I went out there and waved my lamp. Did you, were you intoxicated? Did you take something? And he said, no, I'm completely clean. So what caused that accident? I mean, it seems like he did everything right. He followed all the standard procedures of the train. He did nothing different to what you would expect. 
know what that man did wrong? That foolish man didn't light his light. He never showed the car the lantern. They, they never saw the train coming. They never had any idea. And because he didn't shine his light, because he didn't light his lamp, a whole family's dead. Dead because of his failure. Do you know how many friends and family I have sitting in that car right now tonight? And they're probably sitting at home and they have no idea. Their car's racing towards those tracks and and they they don't know what's coming. I think of my my best mate. We've been friends since we were kids. And I've always known him. We grew up together. Every milestone that ever happened in our lives, we did it together. And we've stayed together since. But he doesn't know Jesus. Do you know how much love I have for this guy? We've been side by side forever, always together. But he doesn't know Jesus. If I don't shine that light, he'll end up somewhere he doesn't want to be. And that somewhere is hell. And this is my best friend. This is my best friend I'm talking about here. Do you think I want to say that to him? No. But I have to. Do you understand how I feel? How urgent this is? I mean, this guy, he's blood to me. We're closer than family. I adore my friends, and that's why I have to tell them about Jesus. I've already lost some mates to that train. Mates that I'll never get back. Mates that that just chose the wrong path. And I can't bear to watch other mates go the same way. I won't lose sleep tonight because my friends don't get the marks they want at school. And I won't lose sleep tonight because they didn't get their dream job. No, I will lose sleep tonight because they're not standing with Jesus. They're not saved. They do not know Jesus. That's what will keep me up tonight. MBM youth, do you see the connection here? If we don't shine the light, what are the consequences? What happens to friends and family if we never tell them about Jesus? Oh, it's far worse than a train. It's an eternity without Jesus. An eternity in the judgment of God, it is hell. Don't waste the gift of the good news. Jesus didn't die so that you could be silent. He didn't die so you could go along life living without telling anyone about him. This is the greatest news ever told that is hardly ever told. Anyone who has ears, let them hear. Go out and tell the world the good news of Jesus. And you guys, you guys have an opportunity that that we don't have anymore. You guys actually have the best opportunity and you might not even know it. You guys go to school. (laughs) Sounds crazy. Um, But you have friends and you're with your friends all the time, 24-7. You guys get to speak into each other's lives. You get to build relationships with each other. You get to talk to each other all day. Can you imagine if every conversation you had, you went in there and you thought, all right, how am I going to tell them about Jesus? How am I going to get the message to them today through this conversation? How am I going to shine his light? Think about, you guys could start Bible studies at school. Like, There's a million different things you could do. You could open up the Bible with friends at school. And go look at God's word together and let God speak into their lives. You don't even have to do the heavy lifting. It's all God. And what about you guys and girls in sports teams? I mean, you guys train together. You sweat it out and bleed together. You do everything together. Why not pray together? Why not pray before every game? What would that do for the gospel? What would that do for their souls? And I guess naturally now, talking about all this... We want to ask the question, what if we don't tell the world? What if we're silent on Jesus' name? So I want you to turn to verses 24 and 25. This is what Jesus has to say. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. 
This verse is two things. It compares the hearing of the gospel and carefully considering the gospel. So many of you here tonight have probably heard the gospel a hundred times. But you've never actually carefully considered it. If you go through life just hearing the gospel and do nothing about it, there's no eternity in that. Jesus doesn't say, hear the gospel and be saved. He says, hear the gospel, repent and believe. And if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus at all, and I understand I've been in that situation too, but I I plead with you, beg you, that if you're going to listen to any part of tonight, listen now. If you've been daydreaming this whole talk, now's the time to wake up. Because how you respond to this message is going to impact how you spend eternity, how you spend forever. This life is one shot. One shot at getting it right. One shot at knowing Jesus and living for him. The Bible says that whoever has the Son has eternal life, and whoever doesn't have the Son doesn't have life. I'm begging you. Consider that truth alone. Consider the whole truth of the Bible. Look at it. Compare it to your life. And I'm not telling you this because I want to make you some religious Christian freaks. No, I want, to, I want you guys to know Jesus. I care about how you're going to spend the next million years. Jesus cares about how you're going to spend the next million years. He takes no joy in seeing people in hell. And I'm telling you, don't wait. Don't say, oh, I'll think about it later, or it's something I'll do when I get older. No, now's the time. Because we don't know if there's a tomorrow. We have no idea. You never know when your time is up. And I get that you're all young now. You guys are looking forward to life. There's a million things in front of you. And it's exciting. But you're going to blink. And you're going to wake up and you're going to be 30 with with kids and working. And then you're going to blink again. You're going to be 80, lying on your deathbed. And there's only one thing that you'll regret on your deathbed, and that is that you did not give your life to Jesus. I genuinely believe, I truly believe that Satan's greatest success, the devil's greatest success in this world, is convincing people that they have time to consider their eternal welfare, that they have time to consider how they're going to spend forever. So I'm telling you, You know, talk to someone tonight. Talk to a leader. Come talk to me at the end here if you need to. Talk with friends. Pray. Pray with them. Pray with yourself. As long as you're talking to Jesus, ask him to show you the way tonight. If you want him, if you sincerely know that you need Jesus in your life, then tonight's the night to pray. He'll be there. Look at his word. Read his Bible. Consider what it says. Compare it to your life and watch him transform you. Don't do it tomorrow. It might not come. Do it tonight. And the final, the final message in, in that verse that I read, it's, it's devastating. It's devastating for those who do not believe. But for the believers, it, you guys tonight that have taken on the gospel, if you considered the truth if you believe in Jesus, if you love Jesus, then he's going to give you even more. He's going to give you that relationship with God, the one you've been craving from the beginning, the one that you've always wanted, the one that God wants for you. He's going to give you an eternity in love. You're going to get to know him, to learn about him, to sit in his presence. When a Christian dies and they write rest in peace on his or her grave, they truly do rest in peace. They rest in peace with God. You have everything to gain by following Jesus. But on the other hand, if if you ignore the gospel tonight and ignore it for the rest of your life, you'll have everything taken from you. You will know nothing of God. There will be no eternity for you. No love. No love from God. You'll never feel that again. No, it is actually hell. There is no peace or rest in the judgment of God. And this verse says, even what you do have will be taken from you. And 
think that speaks, if you don't have the gospel, what, what is this verse saying then? How can you have something if you don't have that gospel? And it says something about, I think, a lot of us. That some have heard the gospel their entire lives. They've been raised in Christian homes from, this, from when they were this tall. They do Christian things. They go to church. They hang out in their Christian groups. They go to Christian schools. They might even seem like really nice people, and they probably are. And they've heard the message of the Bible a thousand times over. They have something of God. They, they know these truths, but they don't have faith in him. They don't trust him with their lives. They aren't living for him. They might pretend for their parents and friends. They fake it thinking they'll make it. And you can convince people around you, but you can't convince God. Hearing it is not enough. No, you need to consider it. And you need to follow God. But can you see why I'm up here begging you tonight? This is probably the most, I don't know, sermon where you don't laugh. But what is stopping you tonight? This is, this is serious. What is actually stopping you? What is the obstacle in your way from you getting into Jesus' arms tonight? He has all the love and the care in the world that you could possibly need. He offers an eternity free from suffering and pain, one that is joyous. Oh, you finally come to rest. All you have to do is give your life to him, to love him, to believe in him, to turn away from everything else, turn your back on the world. Some have heard this a million times and it hasn't changed them. But tonight, tonight might be the first time you believe. Tonight might be the night that you make that step over the line so that you're finally in the arms of your saviour. And for those of you tonight who are already Christians, I want you to imagine heaven with me. To close your eyes and imagine being with God. To sit in his presence. To worship him. To finally be at peace and rest. To imagine your loved ones around you. Worshipping God together. There's nothing more beautiful than that picture. It's the eternity we've been waiting for since the beginning of the Bible. But open your eyes and look to the people around you. These are your brothers and sisters. These are the people that you're going to share in glory with, that you're going to worship God with forever. But let's add to that number. Let's not settle with the 100 people that are here tonight. No, God is bigger than that and greater than that and he can do bigger things. So tonight I'm going to ask you to do something different in discussion groups. Something that I, don't, I haven't seen done before actually. I want you to think of five people in your life that do not know Jesus. Five people that you love and you know that they need him. And this term, we're asking the question, would you like to read the Bible with me? And so when you get back to your discussion groups after worship tonight, I want you to pull out your phones. And this is, it's not normal, so don't do it every week. But pull out your phones, go to your contacts list, your messenger app, maybe Snapchat, I don't care what you use, but <laughs> use something and ask your friends the question, would you like to read the Bible with me? And if you don't have a phone, write five names down. And when you go home tonight, you find a way to ask them. I don't know. Do something. Maybe you have to wait till Monday. But don't, don't wait. Don't, don't hold it back any longer than it has to be held back. Tonight's the night we give our friends the gospel. Be brave. Be unashamed of the God who is unashamed for you. Be courageous. I tell you this, the, the worst thing that can happen to you when you ask someone to read the Bible with you is that they say no. But the best thing that can happen is watching someone go from death to life. Watching someone join us on our journey heaven, heaven bound. We have a big God. And as we pray tonight, as we pray for the people we are messaging, do not be surprised when you see, receive a text back saying yes. Yes. 
The almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, is going to do a work in the lives of people around us tonight. Our friends and family are going to hear the gospel and he's going to change hearts. Be the light that leads them to Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, how then can they call on the one they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Oh, Father, Lord, we praise you for entrusting us with the gospel, for entrusting us to share the good news of you. And Lord, I pray that these are not empty words tonight, that hearts have been touched, and these are not empty thoughts about sharing the gospel, but it's going to change into action. And any action we transform by you into transformed souls. And Lord, we will see lives changed because of tonight. We'll see people come to know Jesus here in this room, that people will take the step from death to life tonight, and that our friends and family around us, they're going to be impacted by this too. That we are truly going to be lamps in the world, that we're going to light up every street in the world. Oh Lord, I praise that we reflect you better, that we love you more. Lord, I pray that as we share the gospel, we are truly worshipping you and your kingdom. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.